Hello and welcome to Lion Pride Sports. I'm Neil Fisher. The Linwood men's lacrosse team is off to a hot start in 2019 after knocking off the number 10 team in the nation to open the season. Joining me now is head coach Jim Lang. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Coach, you're off to a great start this year. What does it mean to the program to uh, see another great start? Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we're excited about it. We've had some success over the past, you know, four or five years. Um, and last year, last year was, we didn't get off to such a hot start. So it's, it's good for our confidence and our young, very young team uh, to start out strong. And, you know, we've got a tough schedule, so we've got to get through it. Is it building that up to that first game in the offseason where it makes the most of the season and, and what you're going to really tell about your team is seeing what that first game holds? Yeah, you know, we, we haven't had a first game with an opponent like that in a long time. Um, you know, it was something when making the schedule I was a little, t little hesitant of to going with a, you know, with a, a tough opponent right away. You know, you like to have those confidence builders at the start of the season normally, but it was a good test, you know, and our guys – our guys stepped up and answered, um, so it really did set the momentum, you know, for us to go five and zero, winning that first game against a top ten opponent. And you guys have a lot of tough tests ahead of you. I mean, going in and looking at this season, what were your expectations when you were creating this schedule? Yeah, you know, in the world of Division two men's lacrosse, there's no automatic qualifiers. Um, so. Getting into the national tournament is, is purely based off of how your regular season goes, your strength of schedule, um, your opponent, your opponent's record, all that kind of stuff. So building a strong schedule is a, is a must. Um, you know, there's always that knowing that we are going to have as many freshmen and sophomores on the field as we do. There was that little bit of hesitation to put so many, you know, top 20 teams on the schedule, especially in, the, in, in, in a row like we have coming up here. Um, but it's really going to get these guys some experience early. And, you know, if, if we can make some noise this year, that's, that's saying a lot about the future of this program. And how do you get those young guys the experience to get on the field before the season starts with the weather affecting in St. Charles and everything and all the other variables? Yeah, um, you just got to keep them motivated. You know, I mean, we were... We were practicing at about five different places. Times were all over the place, um, indoors, outdoors, in the Evans Commons. I mean, we were just getting in where we could, um, watching a lot of film. But you just got to keep the guys motivated, keeping them understanding that we have a goal. Um, and as a team that, you know, we need to just take whatever's thrown at us because in a game you never know what's going to happen anyway. So I think it just did, you know, keeping them motivated and, and moving forward, even though our schedule was changing every single day with all the snow we've gotten lately. I think it just, it just helped them mature a little bit quicker than they normally would have. And did they mature winning the first five games of the season and then dropping a tough one to the number 11 Seton Hill? Yeah, um, they did. You know, I told the guys after the game, you know, going undefeated is is what everybody wants to do, but it's it's a tough thing to do. Um, you know, we learn from it. It's, it's not truly a loss unless we didn't learn. So as long as we learn from that loss, you know, it's it's a plus. I mean, we, we knew we could play with them. We were beating them. We were up, I think, five to two, maybe even six to two at one point. Um, lacrosse was a game of runs, and, you know, they came out on top in the fourth quarter. But, you know, we saw that we can play with anybody. We haven't watched film on anybody that scares us yet. And I think just building that confidence in these young guys is what helps them step up on game day. And that's one thing I wanted to touch on is being mentally tough in, the, in sports in general, not just lacrosse. Um, how does that affect your team, or does it at all – uh, losing that one game? Um, you know, it affects them. Guys were upset. Coaching staff was upset. Obviously, nobody likes losing. And in our sport where it's only, you know, 15, 16, 17 regular season games, every loss counts. But as long as we get through this week, you know, we've had a good film session yesterday going back through the game, looking at some things. You know, I think our guys are mentally tough enough to put that behind them and realize that we haven't lost anything yet. We've still got a chance to achieve our goals this season. We just have to get through this next tough stretch of games. And you guys were ranked at the beginning of the season after knocking off Colorado yep. Mesa. What was that feeling like in the locker room for the guys? Uh, it was great. You know, we've been used to being ranked around here. Um, and then after our tough season last year, we didn't expect to be to start the season but we knew we could get there quickly with the schedule we had put together. So it's been nice to, to get back in the rankings and keep, keep you know, moving up every single week. So the schedule you put together, March is uh, madness. Yeah, March is madness. We can say. Sure. Um, yeah. So what are you, what are you thinking uh, going into March? Um, you know, it's, we're going to really find out what, what our team is made of. Um, you know, we had Seton Hill that first weekend of March. Tampa, St. Leo, uh, then Adam State on a weekday, and then University of Indianapolis. So we've still got, in the month of March, four of our five games are against top 20 opponents. Um, so it's going to be tough. It, 
to be honest with you, when you play a, a big opponent, it's a little bit easier for guys to get up for the game, you know, and, and even coaches. It makes you want to work that much harder to prepare for the game. So I think, I think it's, it's good, you know, to have a tougher schedule instead of just some, some walkthrough games because guys kind of get lazy. And uh, so you have these teams coming from south to yep. play at St. Charles, yep. which is two giant games. And if you're not doing anything for those games, come out to Hunter Stadium. But uh, how do you get those teams from the south to come up to the Midwest to play? Yeah, you know, it, it started with building a good reputation for ourselves. You know, the, the better a team you are, the more chances you have of top teams wanting to play you. So, you know, the past five seasons of making it to the national tournament in 15 and having 10 plus win seasons in 16 and 17, knocking off, you know, knocking off Tampa in 2017 at home, you know, really put a bitter taste in their mouths. So and we told them we'd come there last year, they'd come back, you know, we're going to keep that rivalry going because it's, it's been a pretty heated one for even though, we, even though we've only played each other twice. So Tampa comes up this weekend, March 9th, yep. uh, at Hunter Stadium. Uh, what, are you, what are you expecting from that game? Um, you know, it's going to be a physical, fast-paced game. They've got a lot of big athletes. Um, we think we're one of the most athletic teams in the country as well. And it's going to be a battle. You know, we, we're one and one against each other all the time. Um, you know, they're a team that goes to the national tournament every year. I think they've been six straight years. So it's, it's, a, it's a true test. And it's one that hopefully these young guys can truly get a taste like they did last weekend of what, you know, high-level Division II lacrosse is and what it's going to take to be a national champion, which we obviously want to be. Is it easier to play Tampa after playing them in previous years, or do they run different styles of offense uh, every year? It's never easy, you know. Um, they're in Tampa downtown. It's a beautiful campus. They get a lot of recruits from all over the country because it is Florida, you know. Um, downtown Tampa is a great place, a beautiful place, and their facilities in the world of lacrosse are rival ours, which we're, we're pretty proud to say are, are the best. So, you know, they're always going to have very, very talented athletes. Um, they've had majority of the same coaching staff for a while, so we can kind of gather what they're going to do. But again, if they're anything like us, they're going to try and build around their athletes and not make the athletes build around the system. So what does preparation look like going into the week against Tampa? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of film, you know, a lot of film for the staff, a lot of film for the athletes. Focusing on us the beginning of the week, uh, then, you know, starting maybe the second half of practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, really focusing on Tampa, getting into some scout O&D, um, and just making sure that our guys get a taste of what those guys are going to be doing on the field without actually having the opponent on the field. Will the weather affect Tampa coming up to the Midwest, being that they play down south, or does that not really factor in in lacrosse? It may. It may. Um, you know, it's going to be it's supposed to be 53 and rainy. Um, in Florida, they're used to a lot of rain throughout the day, so I think the rain's not going to bother them. It's going to be a little bit colder temperature than what they're used to, so it could. Um, but again, they do travel up north at times as well. This We might be the farthest north they go this year, but we're not. It's not like they're traveling up to you know, the Northeast where it's much worse right now. So it could affect them. Do we think it's going to? No, because we expect that team to act like professionals just like we would expect our team to. And looking towards the rest of the season, lacrosse isn't very popular in the Midwest just yet. It's mostly popular on the coast, correct? Yeah, yeah, East Coast especially. Yeah. So traveling to games makes a huge difference in how you guys play. Yeah, right? yeah, we do quite a bit of travel. Um, you know, we were down in Georgia to start early, early off in the season. Then we're in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania area. We'll be out in the in the East Coast in North Carolina this year. So we spend a lot of time on the bus. It's just kind of a part of it. But we have to travel and play top teams in order to, to keep our national our national ranking high. Is it more difficult to go on the road those far long trips and get a game in or is it or do you like just staying home playing at home playing at Hunter and seeing everything you've seen before? it would obviously be amazing to play every single game at Hunter Stadium and not have to travel um, especially the amount of time I put on a bus over my career here at Lindenwood but um, you know it's a good experience to get the guys not only for um, for lacrosse, but for the future, for their lives, to understand time management as far as getting their classwork in while on the road, in season. I mean, it's just, it's just good to prepare them for the real world when they're going to have to deal with adversity in everyday life. And you mentioned you have been here at Lindenwood for 16 years. This is my 16th year. Yeah. What, what has that experience been like for you? Uh, it's, it's been pretty crazy, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it, the growth in this place since I've been here um, you know, the buildings, it's, it's been awesome to see. I mean, I, I was a freshman on the second ever lacrosse team here. So this, this has been a part of my life 
for a long time now, um, you know, and, and it's kind of for sure my second home. So it's been awesome. I mean, I don't see myself anywhere else. I'm, you know, being an alumni of this program and, and being able to be the head coach now has been, uh, has been pretty great. And a lot of my former teammates are pretty jealous of, of how it worked out. It wasn't, wasn't my chosen career path, but it kind of worked out this way, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. And seeing it from the outside, if you ever look from the outside in, seeing the program just succeeding, 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 yeah. what does that mean to you? Um, it's huge. You know, when I, after every game, after every big win, when, when all of my best friends who were teammates here of mine are calling me and, you know, how pumped up they get to see the success of the program is, is awesome. You know, I love those phone calls. Love making sure that they understand that, you know, their alma mater's in good hands, and that's, that's important to me. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the uh, game against Tampa March 9th? It's going to be fun. You know, if anybody's got time, 1 o'clock on Saturday, come out. You know, we've got, we've got all home games in March. Um, you know, the weather should start turning here soon to where it'll be a little bit more enjoyable to sit outside. I know we're not climate controlled, which would be nice. But, um, but yeah, get out. It's going to be a fun one, a, a big rivalry game for us, and it's going to have a lot of implications for the national tournament at the end of the year. Awesome, Coach. Good luck. Thank you to Coach Lang for joining me today. Catch the men's lacrosse team in action March 9th against the University of Tampa at Hunter Stadium. I'm Neil Fisher. Thanks for joining us on Lion Pride Sports.